Deborah Jarko and I teach weaving. It's so much fun. So we're going to be doing a project today on the Erica loom made by Louette. It's a great little loom, very handy. Um, it comes unassembled, so I've assembled this loom and put it all together, as you can do easily from the instructions in, that come in the box, or there's a video online that you can look at to help you assemble your loom. So the first thing we're going to do is go over some parts of the loom. And I'm going to just follow along here in the book that comes with your loom so that we can point out each of the parts. The first thing I'm going to point out is the rattle. That's this series of little knobs across the back of the loom, and you'll see later how those come in very handy. The next thing are the beam cords. These are these things here, and after when you assemble the loom, you put them on. Um, this is the reed. It serves several different purposes. It keeps your warp threads spaced a certain distance apart. It also acts as the beater. So um, it's a great little thing and it's attached very nicely here. Very nice motion. Okay, and then we have the cloth beam, which is here, this big beam on the bottom. We have the uh, warp beam, which is the big beam on the back of the loom. And then we have the breast beam, which is here, that because this half is the front of the loom, so the breast beam faces you. And the back beam, of course, is the one on the back. Then we have the apron and lease bars. You have a front apron bar and a back apron bar. And you have the warping strips. These are warping strips. They come with your loom, and we'll show you how to use those as we get set up. Um, you have this extra piece of Texoff cord that comes along with the loom, and this is what we're going to be using uh, to hold the lease sticks uh, when we set up the loom. Then you have these things. These are called the toggles, and these are what raise and lower the harnesses. These are the harnesses. The um, Erica comes with two harnesses, but I've added the additional two so that this loom is set up for four harnesses. So it has the four toggles that you can engage to raise or lower the individual harnesses. Give you a little bit better look of those here as, you, as I put the uh, reed down. Okay, then there are the heddles. You see these Texol uh, strings here that they each have an eye in the center of them. Those are your heddles and those are what you place each warp thread through so that you can individually raise or lower all the warp threads that are on that particular harness. Now when you go to put these on your loom, they come with your loom and you have to put them on without twisting them. So follow the instructions carefully when you put that together, when you put that part together. Um, and then we have the pawl and the ratchet wheel. That's over here. Um, the pawl is this thing that lifts up and down. It works as the brake. The ratchet wheel, the pawl fits right into the ratchets and it keeps the beams from turning when you don't want them to. Okay, the warp are the threads that, uh, can, that live side by side on the loom and those you put on the loom first and then you interlace the weft threads. Those are the ones that go side to side. Warp threads go front to back, weft threads go side to side. And when you set up the loom, you put the warp threads on the loom. That's why it's called warping the loom. Um, I keep referring to the manual that comes with your book so that I'm telling you all these things in kind of the same order. All right, um, the combination of the warp threads and the weft threads is what keeps, that makes your cloth up so that you have interlaced threads like this. Um, you'll need some other things to come along with your, to use with your loom uh, to make everything work. Um, we've got the loom here, and then you need uh, warping pegs or a warping mill. I've gotten here the um, Erica warping pegs that um, you can buy as an accessory kit to come with the loom, and we'll be set warping our loom by measuring out our warp using the warping pegs. And then you get stick shuttles. The shuttles come with the uh, as accessory kit, I'm sorry, um, and I'll show you how to wind these for maximum usage. Um, and then you also get a heddle hook, and this little thing is how you get your warp through the reed and through the holes in the heddles. So those are the tools that we need to get started. We'll also be using, um, these are the lease sticks, and that's going to be another tool that we're using to get the uh, warp on the loom, and then you use this Texolve cord, and it's going to be used to hold the lease sticks. 
I've got all of my uh, yarn set up here. Um, you have to design your warp so that you know what order you want your colors of your warp to be in. We're going to be doing a very simple stripe where I've got color, we'll call it color A on the outside and then B, C, D, E. So we're going to be setting up the warp with a combination of those colors. I'm using the Louette Yarn Gems, which is a, a very nice wool um, that uh, weaves very nicely. There are lots of reference materials out there that you can use to help you determine what design you want to do, how you're going to uh, order your warp threads if you're using multiple colors, um, and those are tools that you should refer to. We've already determined a particular set of stripes that we're going to do for this one, and we've determined the length that we want the warp to be. So the next step is to measure out that length on our warping pegs. So I've attached one set of my warping pegs here. The other, I've attached half, and I'm just going to show you quickly how to uh, how that you set those up. You get the clamps that come with it. So you just put the clamp here in the hole and uh, slip the wing nut up until it's clamped down securely. You can try and show you how I'm doing that. Pretty easy, and make sure that it's secure so that it won't move around. So I'm screwing that in very securely. There we go. So these are not going to move around. Then I know the length that I want the warp to be, so I've measured a uh, piece of waste yarn, preferably in a totally different color than what you're going to use for your actual warp so that you don't get them confused. And um, so I've made a loop in the end, so I started my measurement here at the edge of the knot, and I measured it out to be the total length plus a little extra so I can make a loop at the other end so that I can have my warp be the desired length. And once again, there are lots of ref reference materials to teach you how to make those calculations to work out properly for what you want. And be sure and refer to those. So now I'm just going to put this guide thread on here so that I can get the appropriate length. Now I may have to play with it a little bit to make it be the proper length because I want it to come out just right so that this end comes and is uh, gives me the uh, length that I want once I tie it to itself here on the end. And like I said, I left two or three inches extra so that I would have enough to tie it with. So you can see that I've just stretched it back and forth through the different pegs and then I've come over here and I've gone in a certain pattern so that I can make what's called the cross here, which is an important part of your weaving, which I'll be showing you how to do. So I've got my yarn all set out in the order that I want to do it. I'm going to start with my uh, first color that I'm going to use and um, show you how we're going to do that. So I'm going to put this yarn on the floor. If you have a uh, bucket or a bag, it's good to put, if you're using a ball, put it in a bucket or a bag and put it on the floor. And you only do that so that you don't trip on it as it rolls around. Okay? So I'm going to tie this on to this end, the end that my cross is not at. And I'm making a little knot here to tie it on. And I'm just going to go along and follow the path of the yarn that I uh, placed here as my guide. So I'm going to come over here following the cross and then I'm going to go around this final peg and come back and make a, make a, see how there's a cross right there? Right here where the yarn crosses each other. And then I'm just going to continue on going back making my final loop. So you can see as I'm uh, making my warp that I'm trying not to stretch my yarn too tight because if this yarn has a little bit of stretch in it and if I stretch it too taut then it's going to be shorter than I intended it to be. So you can see that I'm pulling up some slack here with my other hand and um, making sure that it's not stretched tight and then I'm just following my path as I go along and I'm counting the loops because I have a certain number of warp threads that I want to be in this color which is four loops or eight total warp threads. This is one end of my warp 
this is the other end of my warp. So each time I go up, that's one warp thread. And then when I come back, that's a second warp thread. So I'm going to be making four loops or eight warp threads in this particular color for the design that I've created. I had planned on using eight warp threads or four loops for this particular color of yarn on this side of the scarf that I'm making. That also coincides with the number of warp threads I want to have it be centered in my loom and have it be centered appropriately between the tie-on cords. So I'm finished with this color for now. I've uh, come back here to the end and I'm going to cut this off and tie it on to this final warping peg. So I'm cutting this loop, I'm tying it on, um, and just securing it here. And um, I want to keep these eight threads separate from the next group that I put on because that will make my warping easier when I'm putting it on the loom. So I'm going to use choke ties to tie this particular bundle together. I have some pre-cut waste yarn loops here that I can just pull out. For a choke tie, I like to use something that's a different color than the yarn that I'm using in the warp. And I like pieces that are six to eight inches long because they're easy to use. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm, doing, I'm going to be putting on four choke ties around the cross. Since it is a cross, it has four legs sticking out of that uh, cross. I'm going to put a choke tie around each leg of that cross. I don't like to tie it too tight, but I do like to make sure that it's around there. And I like to use bows because bows are easier to get undone when you go to take them off. And um, that's a that's a good thing if it's easy to take off. So I'm just going around the, actually on this one, since this particular part of the chain had eight threads or four loops, I will have four threads on each side of the cross. So I'm just making sure that I have four threads in my bundle on each side of the cross, and I'm just tying a little choke tie around the edge of that so that um, I can keep them all separated easily and that will be a great tool when I go to put the warp on the loom. I've completed color A and I've made eight warp threads or four loops. Now I'm going to go on to color B and that's this pretty lavender color and I'm going to be doing 10 loops or 20 threads of color B and the same of color C, color D, color E, and then I'm going to go back to eight threads or four loops of color A. That's my whole design for this particular pattern. And I've created the pattern to go along with where the tie-on cords are on the uh, warping rods. So that will be a nice way for me to be able to get my warp on easily. I've completed winding all of my warp threads onto the warping uh, pegs. And um, as you can see, I've tied off in all my bundles here around the cross. And now I just need to do a couple of additional choke ties because I don't want all the rest of this warp getting tangled. So I'm just going to every 20 or 30 inches or so, tie a choke tie around the entire bundle, just making sure I don't get that guide thread in there. So I'm just gonna tie one around here, an easy tie and maybe tie one here. And that should be enough. And then after I get it tied up, of course, if I had a much longer warp, I'd be tying a lot more choke ties in there. So then after I get the choke ties tied in, I wanna take it off of the peg. But if I just take it off the peg and put it in a big bundle, it might get all tangled up, even with the choke ties on there. So I wanna crochet the chain. I'm gonna lift this end off of off of the final warping peg. I'm gonna tie a little tie, and of course I'm doing this on the end that does not have the, the cross in it, the cross I'm not going to tie the knot in. So I've just tied this in here. It looks like I got my, um, looks like I got my guide thread in there, which I don't wanna do, so I'm gonna pull that out. Actually, I'm finished with my guide thread, so I may as well just go ahead and cut that. And that's one of the good reasons it's good to have your uh, guide thread be a different color than your warp is, so it's easy to identify. So I'm going to go ahead and retie that knot. 
And then I'm going to place this, oops, again, it's caught. Pull that out. Okay, I'm going to place this in my hand and I'm going to do a crochet chain. Notice how I pull this down so that I have a clockwise circle going on from where it's resting in my hand with the circle being on top of the part that's resting in my hand. I'm reaching my hand through the chain and pulling this part of the loop up to make a loop. Now I have a new loop. I'm not going to twist this. I'm going to make sure I turn my hand and put it down through this way so that each time I twist my hand and bring it down through. I'm going to pull this off of the warping pegs up here and I'm not going to pull that end through because that's what's going to go onto the um, get it onto the loom. So then I can take this and move it over to my loom and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, now we're ready to actually place the warp on the loom and get ready for um, bringing all the threads through in order. So the first thing we need to do is attach the least stick cord. So that's the extra long piece of Texolve that came in your kit. We're going to just put this up here around the posts that hold the levers on and I'm just trying to even it up, even up the tails a little bit. So you can see how this is secured by wrapping it around the posts here. I'm just going to let that dangle now. I've pulled the warping rod um, out of the tie-on cords because we're going to insert this in the order of the warp threads. The next thing I'm going to do is take the warp chain and bring it over the top of the rattle. I'm putting the warp chain there. I'm bringing it, hopefully, so that it's all in order, and I'm going to spread it out a little bit so that it's in the order that I planned for the stripes to be. Okay. There we go. All in order. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting my warping rod back on. I'm going to come through the loop on the end, and this is, if you remember, this was the eight threads that I had to uh, begin with, the eight warp threads that I calculated to make the warp go on in a centered fashion. Then I'm putting my tie-on cord onto the warping rod. Then I'm going to go to my next bundle and make sure it's straight. And I'm going to bring in the next bundle. So that's another 20 threads or 10 loops. I'm putting in the next bundle, which is the next 20 threads, and at this point then, I have to bring on the tie-on cord. Make sure that I get this on in order. Bringing the tie-on cord, making a little loop, and pushing this on. Okay, and then I'm going to bring the next bundle, trying to keep them all in order, and I'm just going through where that uh, went around the final warping peg. I'm inserting my warping rod there. Bring on the next one put it through, then my next tie-on cord. Once again, I'm just making a little lark's head loop to put that through, and then my final eight warp threads. So then I have those all on in order, and I'm ready to just let those rest. Now that we have the front warping rod um, on with all the warp threads attached through the loop on that, we're going to put the least sticks in. So I'm just going to pull the warp back a little bit so this is dangling more, making sure that I don't get them all caught up and out of order. And then I'm going to use the areas where we put the choke ties on so I can slide this least stick through here, making sure that I separate it where the bundles are tied because we took all that time to tie those and keep them neat and in order and um, I'm just taking advantage of that. So it looks like I missed one there, but um, it goes in order. All right, coming along, going all the way across. And then I'm going to attach this so that it hangs through the tech solve. So see how I can push that uh, leaf stick through the hole in the tech solve? And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to keep that secure. And then I'm going to go back and use the opening that I created with the choke ties on the opposite side of the cross and put the least stick through all the way across. 
making sure that I get the cross in the right order. And I'm going to do the same thing where I put this bar through the opening in the Texolve. There we go. And then the same thing on this side. And this is what's going to keep my cross in order. I think we've got those. There we go. Now it's straightened out. Um, I think this is what's going to keep the cross in order. So at this point, then, I can come up here and put my warp threads more in order. Trying to keep them from getting tangled up in the rattle so that I can put them in the right order in the rattle. Okay. So there we go. It's all tidied up. I might want to straighten it. There we go. Straighten this up just a little bit. Now I can take all of these choke ties off because they're all secured in place. So I'm going to pull off the choke ties and then I will spread out the warp threads in the rattle. Now I know that my warp is nine and a half inches wide uh, because it's 96 warp threads and I have 10 warp threads to the inch on this warp. So that makes it just a, a smidge over um, nine and a half inches wide. My rattle, my loom, is 12 inches wide, so that means that I have a little over an inch on each side on the rattle that will be empty uh, when I go and put all of my warp threads in there. It's a, the rattle has five openings per inch, which means that since I have 10 warp threads per inch, I'm going to need to put two warp threads in each opening in the rattle. So that's just some some math um, that I've done ahead of time to figure out how I need to place all my warp threads. But after I take off all of these choke ties, then I'm going to leave about an inch empty here, and then I'm going to fill each rattle slot with two warp threads, and um, then I'll have that all set up to go on to the next step. So now I have finished putting the leaf sticks in through the cross as we did uh, previously. You can see here, since all the uh, warp threads are now in a nice order, you can see the crosses here, the leaf stick coming through one leg, this other leaf stick coming through the other leg, and all of the warping rod is evenly spaced here coming through uh, the front part of where the loop went around on the peg that we did. I also have put a pair of threads in each slot in the rattle to keep all of the warp threads evenly spaced. So the rattle is going to stay in place. The, the rattle is going to stay here, of course, but the leaf sticks are also going to stay in place as we wind the warp onto the back beam where it will live um, before it gets woven. Um, we're going to start this process by starting to wind on so you can see how I've got the brakes still engaged, but I'm starting to wind the warp on. I want to make sure that my warping rod is centered so that it doesn't catch on the edge of the loom. Brake engaged, winding the crank as I start to pull it on. And you can see how the lee sticks keep all of the threads in place. Now before we start overlapping, we need to apply tension on the back. You can do that a couple of ways. You can either have a friend hold the warp for you, or if that's not possible, you can weight it down with something like water bottles that you tie on and your instruction manual that comes with your loom shows you how to do that, or those other reference books you have also might show you how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and start winding the warp on now. All right, so you can see that I've positioned the loom here with the little feet over the edge of the table because as my friend pulls on the warp to tension it, I want the loom not to go sliding back towards her. So the feet are over the edge of the table, so that secures it in place. And I'm going to start winding on, still with the brake engaged. And as I wind on, you can see how her tensioning it keeps all of the threads nice and even. When I get to the point where I'm going to start rolling on top of those other warp threads that are already on there, I want to put some of these uh, warp sticks in between so that the threads don't sink down inside of each other because that would create uneven tension. So to get started, I'm going to put a few in to keep it nice and even. Okay, And then I'm going to continue warping and you can see how all the threads are staying in a nice even order 
because of the rattle and the leaf sticks. And I'm just gonna keep winding on. Now when we get to the point where we've got those choke ties, we're just gonna untie them and pull them out. And just keep winding on and keep going on and on. Now you do have to do something to keep your layers separated. Sometimes people use long strips of paper uh, this loom comes with these wonderful warp dividers, uh, little cardboard sticks that uh, completely serve the purpose. But if you feel more secure putting a long piece of paper in, you can do that. You just want to make sure it's wider than the width of your warp and um, that your paper doesn't, or your warp doesn't fall off the edges of your paper. So we're just continuing on. And we're going to keep doing this till the front of the warp bundle reaches the front of the loom. So now we're completely wound onto the back warp beam and all of our threads are nice in order. They're finished uh, coming through the rattle and we have the tail end of our warp up here so that it just reaches the front breast beam. Okay, now we're going to be threading the heddle. So in order to do that, we need to lift all of these threads out of the rattle, which I'm going to do, and then we're just going to drape them across the top of the harnesses. So I'm taking them out of the rattle and I'm draping them across the harnesses, still keeping them in the um, leaf sticks. I'm going to turn the loom around so the front is facing me. Now, the loom comes with a certain number of heddles and um, you want to center your warp in the loom as much as possible on your harness. So I know that I need approximately 25 heddles on each harness because I've got 96 warp threads. So I actually need 24 heddles on each harness. So I have 50 heddles on each harness to begin with. So I've just taken 13, which would be about half of the excess heddles and pulled them over and I've gotten them out of the way so that my warp will be centered on the harness. So at this point, I'm gonna start, I'm taking my First, I'm going to pull my heddles over in the order that I'm going to thread them. I'm just going to be doing a basic twill pattern where I'm threading the harnesses one, two, three, four, meaning I'm going to have the first thread in harness one, the second in harness two, the third in harness three, the fourth in harness four, and I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way across just for a basic one, two, three, four twill. So I'm going to smooth all these threads out and I'm going to cut them all off at the length of the shortest thread and then I'm going to start threading the heddles. Grab my scissors, find my shortest loop and just cut them all off. It helps if you have a better pair of scissors. Okay. So I'm finished with all of that. Okay, so I'm going to take my first thread as it comes on the leaf stick. And once again, your leaf stick is keeping all of your threads in perfect order. I'm going to use my threading tool that comes with my accessory pack. I'm reaching down. I'm putting the threading tool through the hole or the eye in the heddle, and I'm pulling the warp thread through the heddle. So that was number one. Here's number two. Notice that I'm bringing it down so that it goes through the middle of the, of the harness. Two, keeping all of these in order. I can see that this one is number three. Three, going through the eye, pulling it through. And then number four, going through the one on the fourth heddle. And there we go. So now I've got one, two, three, four threaded. I like to double check and make sure that they're all in order. One, two, three, four. I don't want any crossed threads because crossed threads inhibit your shed when you go to start weaving. Um, so I know those are in order. I'm going to move those over to that side. Pulling out my next one, two, three, four. And I'm going to continue doing this, just threading them one, two, three, four all across the loom. 
I've just finished pulling all of the threads through the eyes in the heddles. And if you'll notice, I've um, gathered them all up in groups of 10, or since I have 96 threads, I used eight threads on each end and 10 threads on all the groups in the middle. And then I've just tied a slip knot in them because I don't want them to pull back through the um, heddles before I have a chance to do the next step. So then I'm going to move all of these into place so that they're centered about where they're going to go in the uh, appropriate order in the warp. So I'm moving these over. And at this point, I can take the leaf sticks out because I'm finished with that. Just pull them right out. I don't need the cross anymore. I'm going to take the leaf stick cord off, and I can move those all, this, all aside to be put in my tool kit for later. I'm just finishing uh, straightening all these out. So that all of, I want all of the threads in each bundle to come straight up from where it is situated on the back beam. So just moving these over. And you can see how, I, since I've put slip knots in here, that keeps them from falling out and getting in uh, the wrong order. So moving all these over so they're in the right spot. And again, you can see that the excess heddles that I have, I have about an even number on each side. Now I had tied these together just so they'd stay out of my way. I can go ahead and take these off um, because I don't need them there anymore, and they just might get in my way. And um, you can see because I tied bows, they're easy to get off, or relatively easy to get off. Okay. So now we're ready to go. Our next step is slaying the reed. So that's what we're, we're going to do next. All right, now we're going to start uh, slaying the reed or pulling the warp threads through the heddle. I mean, not through the heddle, through the reed in the dents in the reed. That I'm using a 10 dent reed, which means that there are 10 openings per every inch of width, which is what I've planned for my warp threads, 10 threads per inch of width. I'm going to start on the first side here. I know this is a 12 inch wide reed, and so again, I'm going to be leaving about an inch and a quarter empty on one side so that I can center my warp in the center of the reed. Now this isn't a lot of thread to give me a lot of room in order to pull it through the uh, reed, so I'm gonna reach back here and take my break off grab my warp and pull it forward just a little bit so that it gives me enough slack. I'm going to put that brake back on and now when I look at these threads and I pull them through I see that I can pull them through and still have enough uh, to deal with on this side. So I'm getting, I'm moving this bundle over so it is for sure coming straight up from where it's coming through the the um, coming off the back beam so it'll make a direct line from the back beam through the heddles up to the front reed. So I'm going to take one at a time in the same order as the threads are coming out of the heddles, and I'm going to make sure that I keep them in order and one at a time pull one thread through each slot in the reed, making sure that I don't cross any threads. I'm going to do that until I continue all the way across the loom. Each bundle of four, I'm going to go ahead again and put a slip knot in just so they don't slide out the back. Okay, now you can see that we have threaded each thread through one slot in the reed. Um, I got a little off center here. I left a little bit too much room on this side, so I'm just going to push my reed over just a little bit so that my warp is centered. Ideally, I would have started about here and it would have been centered in the reed, but with this wonderful little loom, I can just push it over and um, make it be centered anyway. Okay because I want all of my threads coming straight up from the back of the reed and straight through to the reed. I mean, coming back up the, off the warp beam in the back, straight through the heddles and straight up to the reed. So now, the next thing we're going to do is be tying onto the front warping rod. Um, you'll take this rod and put it through the loops in the tie-on cord so that it's attached, like we did in the back. And then I'm gonna start and um, you want to do this in about one inch sections. I'm smoothing the threads. I'm going to kind of divide the threads in half with my finger. I'm wrapping around 
the warping rod. I'm bringing the whole bundle over top of the warping rod and then I'm wrapping around the warping rod and I'm going to tie a tie. Pull up towards the reed and out. Then I'm going to move over to the other side and again I'm doing this in about one inch bundles. So see how I'm smoothing? Sticking my finger in uh, the midway point of the bundle over top of the warping rod wrapping it around, pull the tails up around the outside of the bundle, that gives me kind of a W shape there, and then I'm just tying these two together, and I'm pulling up towards the reed with the tails, and then out to the sides. That's all I'm doing now. I'm not tying a knot, I'm not um, doing a surgeon's knot, I'm just wrapping it around and tying a tie. And I'm going to do that with all the bundles all the way across. I like to start on the outside and work my way towards the middle because I find that that stabilizes the warping rod and I don't have it flopping around as I do if I start in the center. So tying the bundles, just trying to get all those threads, making the W shape and tying the tie. Now that I have them all secured, I'm going to start on one side and tighten each one sequentially by pulling up towards the reed and out. The goal is to get the uh, complete same tension on each bundle as you go across. So I'm just tightening, tightening, and again, I'm not tying a knot or anything. I'm just tying the first step as if you were tying your shoes. Okay, tying are tightening, tightening, and then I'm going to tighten this one. I'm moving that one over a little bit. Now when I get to this one, I'm going to tie a bow. Okay, and then I'm working my way back the other way, retightening and tying bows. The reason I like to tighten all the way across one way sequentially and then go back and retighten and tie a bow is because if I'm just doing it in one direction, each bundle gets just a little bit tighter than the last one. So if I start on one side tightening and then work back the opposite direction, retightening and tying a bow, it tends to make all the bundles a little more even. So we're almost there with all the bows being tied. Just a couple more to go. If you've left your tails too short that you can't make a bow, sometimes you can just make a half a bow where you would pull the one leg through so you just have a half a bow. That takes a little less yarn um, if you've left short tail. So okay, now that I'm all tightened, I'm going to check and make sure that all of my bundles have about the same tension on them. They should have about the same bounce. If one feels a little softer, that means you need to tighten it up. If one feels more drum-like, that means you need to loosen that one a little bit. Okay, so all my bows are tightened. I have even tension on my bundles. Now I'm just going to check and make sure that I've threaded properly and that I have uh, all of my heddles threaded properly and I don't have any cross thread. So I can do that by lifting the heddles one at a time and then I'm going to look in from the side and I don't see any cross threads. So I'm going to each one at a time, I'm looking through and checking for cross threads. Um, if it was across, if it was crossed with something, it would be held down, so you would be able to tell right off if you had a cross thread. So those all look good, and then I'm going to give it a final test where I lift harnesses one and three down, or lift harnesses one and three up at the same time, no cross threads. Lift harnesses two and four up at the same time, no cross threads. Okay, so I'm good to go. Now I can actually start the weaving process. The first thing I need to do is get rid of these gaps in between the bundles. You can see how evenly spaced all the warp threads are as they come out of the reed, but here they're not evenly spaced anymore because I've tied these bundles. So I need to get rid of those so I can start weaving my cloth with all the warp threads being evenly spaced. So I'm gonna start off with just doing uh, what's plain weave, which means I'm lifting harnesses one and three, and I'm gonna put one of these warp sticks in Okay, and then I'm going to put harnesses one and three down and lift up harnesses two and four. And I'm going to put another warp uh, 
spacer in here. And then when I beat those two together, um, I get a little bit of uh, closure going on. I'm going to repeat those. Whoops. I'm going to repeat those until my um, threads are all nicely spaced. Okay, now that I have quite a few of those in, I'm going to beat. Okay, I can push these down a little more. And you can see now my threads are more evenly spaced. All right, now the loom is totally warped and we're ready to start weaving. So the first thing you need to do when you start weaving is load your shuttle. We're using these uh, really nice stick shuttles and um, I'm just going to once again drop my weft yarn into the bucket so that it doesn't roll around all over the place and I'm going to start winding my shuttle. Now you can see that the natural inclination is to just go around and around on your shuttle like this. And that works fine, except that if you just keep doing this over and over, your shuttle will keep building out. Uh, the thickness of your shuttle will be all this way. And it, at some point, it gets too thick to put through the shed or the opening between the layers. So if you do some figure eight, where see how I'm bringing the yarn up from on top? And I'm wrapping it around the side and bringing it from on top to the bottom, top to the bottom. And I'm going to do that on this side for a while. And you can see here, then the yarn is building up on this side of the shuttle. Then I can turn it over and do the same thing on the other side, where I wrap it around that way and it builds up on the other side of the shuttle. So I can just continue doing this over and over on one side, some in the middle, Keep going in the middle a little bit, do some on the other side until I have enough yarn on my shuttle that I feel like my shuttle is going to still go through my shed, but it has pretty much yarn on it. You don't need to put enough yarn on your shuttle to complete the whole project because you can always add yarn um, as you go along. And once again, all of your reference books show you multiple ways to do that. Um, we're just getting you started. So round and round, I think this is enough yarn to get started with. So I'm going to cut this off. And then we can uh, get started weaving. Now you can see after we put our spacers in here that we've run out of room to weave here. So I need to advance the warp. I'm going to reach back here and I'm going to take the paw off of the, I'm going to take the paw off of the uh, ratchet and then I can just let that rest and I can roll the front forward then. Whoops, it, did it pop back on? No. I'm just rolling this forward, okay? And then I'm going to put the paw back on and I'm going to wind the back back up so that my warp is tight again. But you can see here now I have room to weave with and this has started to go around the uh, cloth beam up here in the front. So I'm going to open the shed. I'm just going to be weaving plain weave, which means that I'm going over one thread under the next, over one under the next. And I can do that by raising harnesses three and four and that means I just pull the levers down. I'm raising harnesses one and three, not three and four, one and three. I put the shuttle through, okay? I don't want to leave the tail hanging out around the uh, outside edge. There are lots of ways you can deal with your ends on your weaving. Um, and you know, you'll learn lots of different ways to do that. But to begin with, we're just going to tuck the tail in so it doesn't hang out the side. So I'm just bringing that, I'm wrapping it around the selvage thread bringing it in and letting it hang out the bottom of the warp. And I'm going to beat that in, okay? Put this back. I'm going to lower harnesses one and three and raise harnesses two and four. And I'm putting my shuttle back through the opposite direction. Every time I raise or lower, every time I change sheds by raising and lowering different um, pairs of harnesses, I beat. So I'm changing, I'm going back to one and three, shuttle through, and beating. 
Now, depending upon what kind of cloth you're making, that depends on how hard you beat. Most patterns that you look at will tell you you have so many PPI, or picks per inch. Pick is just another word for a row of weft. Um, it can also be called a shot. Um, so that tells you how hard you want to beat. Obviously, if you're making upholstery fabric, you're going to beat a lot harder than if you're making a scarf. Um, I'm probably going to be looking for a balanced weave structure here, so that means that I'll be wanting to beat 10 rows of weft per inch because I have 10 rows of warp per inch. But those are things that your pattern or your design will tell you. So I'm just showing you the technique as you change sheds, go back and forth, change sheds, shuttle through, even up your edge, beat, change sheds. And you just continue doing this as long as you want your cloth to be. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to warp your loom. And um, I think that you'll have lots of fun using this little Erica loom. It's really a fun loom to play with. It's light, it's easy to carry around with you, and it folds down very easily so that it fits in your tote bag and you can take it with you. Um, for more information on how to weave, go to louette.com and you can see lots more information and where to find your local retailer to get all of your accessories and extra tools that you might want. Thank you.